Well, hello everybody and welcome to the channel. We got a treat and the treat is an Epiphone Excellente. I got it in today. And so this evening, I, I, there's no way I'm waiting to do a review on this guitar. Uh, a couple of things as we begin to get in and really look at the specs on this guitar and the playability of this guitar, which is, it has exceeded my expectations. I had pretty high expectations when I got this, and I'm not disappointed. I'm about as happy as I can be because it's better than I thought it would be. Uh, I don't know what's going on over there in Indonesia, but they are killing it with these instruments. The one behind me, the uh, Epiphone inspired by Gibson Hummingbird, the Epiphone Excellente, which is a step above the Hummingbird as far as all things guitar goes. And that is one phenomenal guitar back there. I, I couldn't be happier. Uh, I could not be happier with what I'm seeing out of Epiphone. It is fascinating what we're looking at. Okay. First of all, I, I'm going to, I, I, I want you to take a look at this pick guard. I'm, I'm going to be putting pictures up throughout this video, but I want you to see that pick guard. And I, I'm not much of a fan of pick guards, but I am loving this pick guard. That eagle, the inlays on this uh, pick guard are phenomenal. By the way, that is an ebony bridge, which I think is just, is beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, a few things about this guitar we're going to talk about before we start playing it. And... Uh, Everything you see from an inlay standpoint on this neck and on this headstock, that is not perloid. Now, I don't know who's in charge of specs with uh, Epiphone, but they must have fallen asleep. I emailed Gibson over this because I will tell you originally what I did was I put this guitar on order. And, by the way, I believe those are Gibson Cluson tuners. They are, they're unbelievable. I have not tuned this guitar. I took it out of the case about two hours ago, and I have not tuned this guitar. Okay? I haven't tuned, oh, by the way, look at the back. That is solid oven call, back and sides with a Sitka spruce top that I will guarantee you I have not looked, but that is scallop bracing. Just by the sound of it, you can tell it. It's got Fishman Sonotone or something like that in there. Not much on electronics anyway, so I didn't look at that too close because I could care less about the electronics. I'm not going to plug it in anyway. Solid oven call. Absolutely beautiful. You can see the grain inside that sound hole. Solid oven call. Sitka spruce top. Triple A. Guaranteed that's triple A Sitka. And look at the finish on the front of this guitar. It is absolutely beautiful. Now, originally, as many of you know, because you've probably been surfing around the... YouTube looking at reviews on this. They only made 141 of these to begin with. This is the guitar Loretta Lynn had. Now, what makes this guitar so interesting? Number one, they only made 141 of them to begin with uh, 50, 60 years ago. And not only did they just make uh, that many and they stopped, this is the first time that they have begun producing these guitars since then. So the 
question on the table, ladies and gentlemen, is is Epiphone doing things right and is Gibson seem to be okay with it? I don't know how Gibson's okay with it, but Epiphone's doing things right. There is no doubt about it. I have picked up to date two of Epiphone's latest marvels and I couldn't be more impressed with both of them. These guitars, they're going to remain in the arsenal over here at the house. They will remain with me. This neck is a kind of a chunky C-shape and it feels really good. I kind of like that. I've got an old 1969 Silvertone. Scott Baxendale redid. You folks have... Uh, if you've looked at the reviews on that that I've done, uh, or, or the one review that I did on it, then you know that's one of my favorite guitars. Uh, I, I love it. I've always got that out. Uh, this neck reminds me of that Silvertone neck. It really does. And it, it's comfortable. Uh, it's it's a little bit thick from for what most people might be a little bit used to, but I think it's worth the journey to get used to it. Now, I worked with Sweetwater on getting this guitar, and one of the reasons I wanted to work with them on it was I, I didn't want it leaving the factory with any problems at all. And uh, the only people that could guarantee that to me, really, in my mind, is Sweetwater. And one of the reasons is because I, I've, I've, I've bought many guitars from them over the years. They have never sent a guitar to me that had a problem, ever. Now, I'm not saying that they've never gotten anything out the door and it didn't have an issue. Nobody's perfect. But I have not received anything from them that they didn't go over with a fine tooth comb. This guitar right here included in that mix. Uh, they did a wonderful job. I, I, my sales engineer over there, very, very nice gentleman. And he's the one that uh, I spent the time with actually uh, getting the guitar secured and having some discussions about it and what the folks there at Sweetwater thought about it, as well as straightening some of these specs out. Now, I did go to Gibson myself to straighten out this spec on these Mother of Pearl inlays and uh, get the straight uh, uh, straight skinny on that, so to speak. But, uh, uh, and, and I'm amazed that uh, these technical specs have gotten out the door the way that they have with the OEM, with the, with the original manufacturer, equipment manufacturer, and that in this case would be Epiphone. But they did let it slide out the door, not realizing, I guess, that they had really called these out as perloid when the fact is, these are mother of pearl. And I just want to mention that one more time. These are mother of pearl. Now, on this neck, this is kind of interesting. On the neck, you've got a, a seven-piece neck. Now, they call it out as a five, but you can plainly count these and see across here. These are walnut inlays. I believe these are walnut inlays. This is a maple neck with walnut inlay, or not walnut inlays, but these 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 are not painted on strips here. These are strips of actual walnut, okay? And everything else you see in between those little small strips, that's maple. And so you have got a work of art on this neck. And I don't know that I've ever seen one like this before. I, 
I just find that very interesting from a design standpoint. But it is absolutely beautiful all the way around. Everything about the guitar. I couldn't have... I couldn't have asked for anything more, especially at the price point. Unbelievable that these things list for a grand, basically. Uh, I don't know that you could find another guitar of this quality at that price point. I really don't know that you could. You might be able to. If you found a used guitar somewhere, all solid wood, uh, you might be able to hit that price point if somebody was dying to get rid of it. Uh, but I will tell you that this is a phenomenal guitar. The 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 frets on the guitar, beautifully done. They didn't leave with any issues on these frets. The binding is absolutely perfect. Uh, yeah, it is absolutely a work of art. You will not go wrong if you decide you want to pull the trigger on this. Now, they consider this a budget guitar. Now, I, I don't know who calls what a budget guitar, but $1,000, uh, uh, that's not exactly what you would call cheap. But for what you're getting with this guitar, uh, to me, easy, this is a three to five, six thousand dollars $6,000 guitar. If you pick this up at Gibson, if you were to buy this and it had a Gibson name on the, on the logo and built in Montana, You'd be paying five or six thousand for this, and this build quality is just unbelievable. Now, there is one thing that I will do on the guitar. I'll change the strings on it. I don't like these strings. They, the specs call out that they got Gibson strings on them, and, and I'm not a Gibson string fan so much. Uh, I suppose they're okay, but I use Martin Retro 12s. That's what I put on my acoustics, and, and they've yet to fail me on an acoustic. They're just... I appreciate you joining me today for a review on the Epiphone Exelante. Just a fantastic guitar. I'll never cut this thing loose. Uh, this is one fantastic guitar. I absolutely love it. I would say uh, if you're in the market and uh, you have about a grand to spend, uh, this is the guitar to pick up for that money. Uh, there's no question about it. Not only that, but uh, uh, it is just... It's one of those guitars, I think, that when you pull it out, uh, you'll wake some people up with this, not only from the way it looks, because it plays every bit as, it, as good as it looks. And to me, that's, that's the more important thing. But it is a work of art, and it is beautiful. You just don't always pick up beautiful guitars that play all that great or sound all that good. This Oven Call... Uh, I'm not sure what I would equate Oven Call to. I think maybe, uh, maybe a little bit more of a so, somehow maybe a little cross between a mahogany and a rosewood. I don't know. I don't know anything about trees really. I mean, I recognize a pine tree down here in East Texas, but uh, but I'm not much on trees. But I mean, I get the woods and uh, the mahoganies. I understand the sound. Uh, the rosewoods, I kind of have a pretty good idea. I've had a few rosewood guitars. I've still got. Uh, uh, a few rosewood guitars here with the Sitka spruce top on them. Uh, the mahoganies, uh, like I said, I, I'm, I'm fairly familiar with the sound on those, and I love the sound on the mahoganies. That's exactly what this uh, Epiphone Hummingbird, inspired by Gibson, is, mahogany back and sides, and I love the sound of that guitar. Uh, but this one is a, a little more mellow from that, 
but it has a very distinct flavor about it in the sound. And uh, it's got some depth to it as well. But it's very good balance across the guitar, and I don't think there's any way you're going to go wrong picking it up. So appreciate everybody joining the channel for the review of the Epiphone Exelante. Uh, I believe this is the Master Built Collection, part of the Master Built Collection. It's just incredible, everything I said about it. Uh, I, I'm giving you like real-time feedback with this thing. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I got it in, I, I told my wife, I said, I, I don't know if I've ever held anything uh, that uh, felt so good to me. Uh, uh, you know, in my arms, and she said, uh, uh, what about me? <laughs> I, I made him, I hesitated. Uh, I'm pretty sure I shouldn't have hesitated, but uh, I mean, obviously, I, I love her more than I love this guitar, but uh, you get the general idea, right? Anyway, uh, it's all good fun anyway, and uh, that's why we play guitar, isn't it? I, I hope that's why we play guitar. First, to have fun, and if you can make a little money at it, well, way to go. Uh, Thank you again. Hopefully this helped you. Uh, if you've been looking at this guitar, uh, I hope I nudged you in the right direction. Uh, it's impressive. I can't imagine anybody picking it up and not feeling the exact same way. Uh, I, I would suggest if you're going to pick this guitar up, go see Sweetwater. Uh, one of the reasons I always bring them up is because of the attention that you get and the attention to detail. As I mentioned earlier, I don't get junk from them. I get I get guitars that have been gone over, inspected, looked at, checked out, and if I need anything done to them, they're more than happy to do that. And I'll just add this to the end of the tag, and then I'll uh, I'll end the video. Uh, Sweetwater didn't ask me to do this. Epiphone didn't ask me to do this. Gibson doesn't know my name with the exception of a few checks I've written them. I'm pretty sure they go back in the records and find my name. They might recognize it that way, but other than that, they don't know me. I really feel this way about this guitar. Very impressive. The Epiphone inspired by Gibson Hummingbird in the back there. Oh, you just can't go wrong with these. Uh, you just can't. I, I still, to this I can't believe Gibson allows this to happen. Uh, but shh, let's not tell them. All right. Thanks for joining. Have a good one. Take care of your friends. Take care of your family. God bless. We'll see you next time.